In this video, we are talking about digestive system of human. Human digestive system is a pipe-like structure which starts from the mouth and ends in the anus. In between, we have some organs like stomach, small intestine and large intestine where the digestion of food occurs. There are some glands which helps in the digestion such as the salivary glands, liver and pancreas. Digestion of food means breaking down the food into those molecules that can be absorbed by the body. So if we divide the food into three categories, the three main categories will be carbohydrate, protein and fat. Now let's understand what kind of bonds in carbohydrate has to be broken by the digestive system to absorb the molecules. Starch is one type of carbohydrate which is found in most of the grains. If you are eating rice, bread or noodles, you are eating starch. Starch is a polymer of glucose molecule. That means starch has lots of glucose molecule bonded to each other by glycosidic bond. The purpose of digestion is to break the bonds so that we can get the free glucose molecules that can be absorbed by our body. Starch is a storing material of plants. They store glucose as a form of starch. Just like that, animal body also store glucose in the form of glycogen. So if you are eating some animal organs like animal liver, you are eating glycogen. And the molecular structure of glycogen is similar to starch. So this is also a polymer of glucose. Now if you are drinking milk, then you are drinking another type of carbohydrate and that is lactose. The molecular structure of lactose is quite different. It has one galactose molecule and one glucose molecule bonded to each other by glycosidic bond. So we have to bake that bond to get the free glucose and galactose. The next kind of carbohydrate is sucrose which is found in fruits and vegetables such as sugarcane, apple, orange and carrots like that. Or the sugar that you add to your tea or coffee is also sucrose. So the molecular formula of sucrose is it is made up of one glucose molecule and one fructose molecule which are bonded to each other by glycosidic bond. So we have to break the bond through digestion to get free glucose and fructose. Another type of carbohydrate is maltose. It is found in some grains such as barley or maybe sometimes in honey and it is made up of glucose molecules. Two glucose molecules, it is a disaccharide of glucose. So in case of carbohydrate digestion, we have to break three types of bonds. One between glucose and glucose, second is between galactose and glucose and the third is between glucose and fructose. Now coming to the second category of food that is protein. Protein is made up of different types of amino acids. So amino acids are the building block of protein. Amino acids binds to each other by a specific bond called peptide bond to make a protein. So in course of digestion, we have to break the peptide bonds of the protein to get the amino acids that can be absorbed by the body. Now the third category of food is the fat or the lipid. So the fat or the lipid is made up of glycerol and fatty acids. In one molecule of fat, there is one glycerol attached to three fatty acids. They are bonded to each other by ester bonds. So in digestion, we have to break the ester bonds by some enzymes to get the free fatty acid and glycerols that can be absorbed by the body. There are some glands, enzymes and organs involved in digestion. So I am dividing the whole digestive system into three parts, mouth, stomach and intestine. So we will understand the glands and enzymes involved in each case. So starting with the mouth, so we will zoom into the mouth section and understand the glands and the enzymes released from them. 
the most important glands of the mouth are the salivary glands there are three pairs of major salivary glands and those are parotid gland submandibular gland and the sublingual gland there are two types of salivary glands present in the mouth the major and the minor salivary glands the major salivary glands are three pairs those are parotid submandibular and sublingual and the minor salivary glands are found in all over the mouth one of the significant minor salivary gland is von ebner gland which is present towards the back side of the tongue all of the salivary glands release an enzyme called amylase which can digest the carbohydrate especially the starch amylase breaks the bonds between two glucose molecules another enzyme is released in the mouth is lingual lipase and lingual lipase is released by the minor salivary gland von ebner gland lipase is responsible for breaking the ester bonds of the lipid or fat moving to the next part of the digestive system is the stomach the digestive food pipe starts from the mouth and after digestion in the mouth the bolus goes to the esophagus and reaches the stomach now if we cut a section of the stomach wall and zoom into the stomach wall we can see some invaginations those are the gastric glands in the gastric glands there are some cells which release some enzymes so these are chief cells which release pepsinogen which is a pro enzyme that is this is not an active enzyme this is inactive another type of cell those are parietal cells they release hcl in the presence of hcl the ph is lowered in the stomach and the pepsinogen is converted into pepsin in the presence of hcl and the pepsin is the active enzyme which acts on protein it breaks down the protein into amino acids after the stomach comes the small intestine the bolus in the stomach converts into chyme and enters the small intestine small intestine is a pipe like structure which starts just after the stomach and connects to the large intestine at the end there are two major glands which pours the secretion into the small intestine are the pancreas and the liver now let us zoom into the small intestine small intestine is a pipe like structure and in the wall the inner wall of the small intestine has some invaginations and the fringal like projections those are called villi and the invaginations are the crypts of lubicon so we are inside the small intestine and the liver and pancreas will pour its secretion into the small intestine the liver gives out the bile into the small intestine the bile contains bile salt which acts on the lipid or the fat bile salt acts as dispersant and it breaks down the bigger lipid droplets into smaller droplets so that the lipase enzyme can act easily and break down the fats due to the emulsifying property of the bile salt it resists the smaller droplets to join again and make a bigger droplet so it helps to keep the lipid droplets small so that the lipase can work on it properly another gland that pours its secretion into the small intestine is the pancreas the pancreas exocrine glands secrete some enzymes which comes into the small intestine one of the pancreatic enzyme is lipase which breaks down the fat or lipid the second enzyme from the pancreas is amylase which breaks down the carbohydrate the bonds between the glucose molecules next three pro enzymes or the zymogens are released by the pancreas for protein digestion these are not active enzymes these are activated when it comes to the small intestine so the pro enzymes released by the pancreas are 
the trypsinogen precursor of trypsin chymotrypsinogen and procarboxy peptidase now when these three comes into the lumen of the small intestine the trypsinogen first gets activated by a brush border enzyme enterokinase this enzyme is present on the villus of the small intestine it activates the trypsinogen into trypsin then further the trypsin will activate chymotrypsinogen into an active enzyme chymotrypsin and the trypsin will again act on the procarboxy peptidase and it will become carboxy peptidase the active enzyme all of these trypsin chymotrypsin and procarboxy peptidase acts on protein and breaks down the protein into amino acids so these are responsible for the protein digestion next coming to some enzymes that are attached to the villus of the small intestine lumen these are called the brush border enzymes some of them are sucrase lactase and maltase these are called brush border enzymes because they are situated on the villus of the small intestine sucrase works on sucrose and breaks it down into glucose and fructose the lactase will break down the lactose into glucose and galactose and the maltase enzyme will break down maltose into glucose molecules now let's do a quick recap starting from the mouth so in the mouth we have two enzymes one is amylase for carbohydrate digestion and the other is lingual lipase for lipid digestion after the mouth the stomach in the stomach we have one enzyme that is pepsinogen which will be converted into pepsin in the presence of hcl in small intestine we have the secretion of liver which is bile salt and from the pancreas we get different enzymes one is lipase for lipid digestion amylase for carbohydrate digestion and for protein digestion we get three zymogens trypsinogen chymotrypsinogen and procarboxy peptidase and in the wall of the small intestine we have some brush border enzymes one brush border enzyme that is enterokinase in the small intestine will activate trypsinogen into trypsin and then trypsin will activate chymotrypsinogen into chymotrypsin and procarboxy peptidase to carboxy peptidase which are the active forms for protein digestion and the other brush border enzymes for carbohydrate digestion are sucrase maltase lactase for disaccharide breaking and glucoamylase and dextrinase for oligosaccharide breaking now let's understand what kind of food is being digested in which section of the digestive tract so the carbohydrate is digested in mouth by amylase and fat is digested in mouth by lingual lipase but no protein digestion in mouth in the stomach only protein digestion by pepsin no carbohydrate or fat digestion occurs in stomach in the small intestine all of them carbohydrate protein and fat is digested for carbohydrate we have amylase from pancreas and all the brush border enzymes in the small intestine those are sucrase maltase lactase etc now coming to the protein digestion in small intestine for protein digestion we have trypsin chymotrypsin and carboxypeptidase in the small intestine all of them coming from pancreas and activated in small intestine and for lipid digestion we have lipase from pancreas and bile salt which helps in lipid digestion is coming from liver as no enzyme is secreted by large intestine so i'm not mentioning it here so this is it for the digestive system i have included a written form in the description so if you want to read it you can click on the link and if you need the photographs of the full pages you can find them on the facebook and instagram pages thank you